Okay, how can we export these SVGs so we can use them somewhere else? It's ridiculously easy, thanks to the author of this P5 SVG library. Uh, go in here, and let's create a button. Let me just pull this up and make sure I don't get lost. Um, so in our body, we're going to create a button element. Cool. And we're going to give it an on-click handler. So this will handle any click on the button. And all you have to do is tell it to run this function, which is loaded when you load the library as we have done up here. That's it, seriously. So let's run it. Um, there's my button. Oh, I should give it some text here. Save SVG. There it is. And um, okay, fine. Why don't we get specific about this? Get picky so that it doesn't ruin our layout. And it's up here. Um, that was completely optional and probably ridiculous. Whatever. There it is. Done. So show in Finder. And I use Affinity Designer because I don't really want to pay Adobe as much as they're asking me to pay every month. And there they are. They're all there. Now, some of them, it looks like, are being drawn with white backgrounds, so you probably want to go back in there and change that. But what's nice about this is you have a single layer, and then they've grouped them all for you. So some of the sizing can be a little weird. As you can see, this bounding box is strange. But the good news is that all of the core elements um, are now at your full disposal as individual little um, layers. Pretty cool, right? So now you can edit them or export them and do whatever you want. Uh, I recommend, of course, going in there and, and changing that fill to no fill so that you don't get the same issues that I'm seeing. But that's it. So stick around if you want to go over um, composition versus inheritance and how you can approach this in a more functional way uh, for creating these objects.